This video is just a visual review summary of the two main design documents that we got from John Gower, the designer who worked with us on the house. For the record, we're very pleased with what he did. I'm excited to see it come to, to uh, a reality now. The first set of drawings that I'm scrolling through here now are just the construction drawings. Um, we're currently going through all of the details with these with the builder to finalize the budget uh, cost estimate of what it's all going to cost, uh, making the major design choices for primarily the um, mechanical systems and interior finishes like kitchen cabinets and flooring and trim options and things like that. Uh, obviously the construction details and the design of the house, the square footage, the amount of siding and all of that type of stuff is pretty locked down now so it is what it is but we're we're going through the final budget so that we can um, lock that down sign the contract and be um, trying to execute against the target that um, everybody has agreed to so I'm just scrolling through the drawings here you saw the first few were the exterior view then there's the plot plan that shows the house up on top of the hill, the pathway down the hill, and then a future site, uh, not in the scope of the first project um, this year, a future site of a little studio or cottage down closer to the beach. I'll spend a bit of time just scrolling through the floor plans here. Main floor, basement that we're looking at now with two bedrooms in the basement, a central small living room we called the craft room, bathroom, mechanical systems and storage in the basement. And then this is the upper floor with the master bedroom um, facing out towards the water, walk-in closet at the top of the drawing and the ensuite bathroom on the bottom. And then a small office area in the front of the house. Is just spend a bit of time on the drawings, the elevation drawings. This one looking from the back of the house. Scrolling down to the view from the north side of the house. So this is um, the view our neighbors would see. And of course there'll be a fence. There'll be a fence there, a uh, two meter tall fence. So you won't see the bottom part of the garage or the basement foundation part of the house. You also, you also saw there briefly, if you, you can see in the, some of the garage uh, elevations, you see the cistern um, underneath the garage as well. This elevation is from the south side, um, so we don't really have neighbors on this side, so this is a bit more um, space for us. And then the front front view with the covered porch. We wanted that because we sort of got to like that style or that feature um, when we were in Houston. Obviously, you don't need a covered porch in uh, our climate for heat so much. Um, but the big win from, from, uh, from a design perspective was when John came up with this wraparound porch of the size that it is, it adds a lot of roof area, which is great for capturing rainwater. Um, the more roof area we have, the more gallons of water we collect for every inch of rain that falls. So that was a big bonus. I was quite pleased when he came up with that because it added, I don't know, four, five, six hundred square feet of roof area to the to the house without really adding a bunch of uh, expensive interior uh, square footage, which we don't need, um, and it costs a lot of money. So overall, the house is about 3,000 square feet, including the basement. The main floor is 13 and change. The upper floor is 700, and the bottom floor is about 1,000, of which 700 or 800 is finished with the bedrooms and the mudroom and the craft room and the bathroom. The garage is 16 feet wide. That's a 10-foot door, which I think is a bit larger than average, which is good, but a 16 by 24 garage. We kept it small because we didn't want to overwhelm the front of the house architecturally. Um, don't really need a garage for your vehicles in this climate, um, but it was primarily for aesthetics.
we separated it from the house again so that you can see a bit more of the house and also that passageway between the garage and the house that we're looking at right now is the access from the front of the house with equipment like a bobcat or a quad or something that will end up getting down the hill on the pathway. So this side of the house that we're looking at now is the means of getting anything from the front of the house down the hill to the beach. scroll out a bit so that you get a perspective of the entire property. So it shows the elevation change from the water, the beach basically, which is the, the lower end of the property there. The little shed on the bottom right is existing. We have that already. The other building um, won't look like that. I don't like the shape of it, but that spot is where we would put the studio cottage something like a 16 by 20 foot um, little room with power probably no plumbing to start with um, but that's a future project we still have any money left over I intend to try to build that myself for something to do and you see the pathway um, there'll be a little bit of design on the fly once we get in there with an excavator but the, that pathway trajectory that we saw a minute ago is a constant 20% grade. Just a little bit of a show and tell with the cool features of this fancy software. Now we're in the living room. This is a bit out of date. The designs moved on a little bit, but the overall idea of where the fireplace is and all of that hasn't changed. And similarly, the kitchen has evolved a bit as well. The island is not that shape in, in reality. The stove is further to the right. The microwave's gone. It looks more balanced and um, nicer in the current 